Sabah al Hadi. As the sun rises from the east, with shimmering glows warming your skin, you begin to rise. As the woman of the inn begins to stir the coals from the previous night and begins to light a fire, she'll begin to cook your breakfast. You're currently in the city of Timbuktu. The date is 1330 AD, March 29th in the Western calendar, or the third of Shaban, 730 AH in the Islamic calendar. Your name is Ahmed Mustafa al Muhudi. You're a merchant currently in the Mali Empire, working to pay off your debts that occurred from your latest mercantile venture. You ignore the rules of business and sunk most of your wealth into a cargo shipment of fine wines, weaponry, and exotic textiles being shipped from Constantinople to Tunis. You would have gained a rich sum of 100,000 ducats, enough to buy a whole vineyard and retire for the rest of your life. Though, unluckily for you, pirates raided your ship, enslaved your crew, and stole your cargo. A tough lesson in never keeping your eggs in only one basket. You're living in Algiers and you have a wife and two daughters, but as a result of your financial blunder, you'll have to leave them and hit the road. Taking out loans from nearby mosques and other merchants, sultans, and traders, you've racked up a severe debt of 50,000 ducats, and you've purchased a wealth of goods, swords, paper, cinnamon, textiles, and other products. You're hoping to trade these deep in sub-Saharan Africa to pay off your debts. To maximize your profit, you've traveled to wealthy lands where many merchants are hesitant to venture. The Empire of Mali. While the Empire of Mali is a wealthy land overflowing with gold, salt, and slaves, it is a dangerous journey to make. The lands between North Africa and West Africa are divided by the Sahara Desert, an immense, sprawling, arid space of over 3 million square miles, an area roughly the size of the USA, with room to spare. The desert can get over 120 degrees Fahrenheit during the hottest part of the day. The sand can get hot enough to scald the skin. Scorpions and snakes lie in ambush, ready to strike any fool dumb enough to overturn a rock. Fierce sandstorms rip through the region, guiding people off course, blinding people with piercing sand and creating air temperatures up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, rapidly causing overheating and dehydration in the human body. Hostile bandits and tribesmen lay in wait for wandering caravans to ambush and rob. Warring kingdoms may attack any caught in their crossfire. There are great riches in the Empire of Mali to be gained, but there's also a great risk with every crossing. Though you take the advice of fellow merchants and you graciously paid a Tuareg guide, a native of the Sahara Desert, to help you cross. Marching forth with a caravan of over 5,000 camels, with 1,000 camels alone filled with supplies just for the journey, you've traveled for three months from oasis to oasis, across dunes, rock deserts, shifting sands, and you've passed by relics of an ancient past ancient rock carvings depicting pictures of flowing rivers, hippos, crocodiles laying in the sun, and groves of palms and forests. Pictures of an ancient past before the Sahara was a desert. Since you've arrived in the city of Timbuktu two days ago, you've done nothing but sleep and rest. A journey of three months rest across these barren deserts warrants relaxation. Looking around your room, you're currently in the inn. Though unlike a Marriott, it's not a five-story building with a pool, but rather a one-story mud brick building and a heart in the center. Sharing the inn with your tour guide and other merchants from foreign lands, you'll enjoy a bowl of millet sprinkled with honey and yogurt, a dish for higher classes and guests in the Mali Empire, but shunned as poor by many foreign travelers, such as Ibn Battuta. You'll be in the city for the next nine months as the journey took a toll on your camels and they'll need to spend the rest of the year resting for your next year's journey back home. Though, it's a great day to begin exploring this beautiful city.
Leaving the inn, you'll walk on dirt-trodden paths with oxen pulling carts passing by. Houses of mud, brick, daub, and wood poke out of the ground. Wooden beams jut out of the buildings, providing support for roofs and floors. Children run past each other, fighting each other with wooden swords as the elderly walk by. The city of Timbuktu, with well over 100,000 people, is a wealthy trading city situated across the Trans-Saharan Network, a trade network spanning from the southern coast of Ghana, Benin, and Nigeria, trading goods such as gold, salt, and slaves across the heartland of Mali, and traveling north along the Sahara Desert to the cities of North Africa. With this trade came education. The city is renowned in the medieval era as a city of learning, with one of the largest university systems in the world at its time, and the largest in West Africa. With a collection of three mosques, teaching courses from astronomy, history, theology, philosophy, and many more, it had over 25,000 students at its height, and over a million manuscripts in its libraries. Walking through the streets, you'll pass the St. Cor Mosque, a famous medieval university, where you'll overhear lectures of Mansa Musa's recent pilgrimage to Mecca, professors teaching constellations and trigonometry. As the students walk through the streets bringing their scrolls with them, the market has begun to become alive. Stalls begin appearing in the city plaza and along the streets. Ox carts bring woven textiles and grain into the plaza. Horses grunt as vendors exclaim their health and their sturdiness. Bringing your goods to market, you'll lay out a blanket and place cinnamon, pepper, paper, swords, dates, and wine to present. As people speak in varying languages throughout the city, with over 300 languages being spoken at any time, the best way for you to negotiate and trade is through sign language and using Arabic the lingua franca of the region. Shouting to your customers about how great your deals are, you're ready to sell, though you've got to make a profit. Don't forget, you have a debt to pay off. You've bought a bolt of wool in Venice for four ducats. You sold it for 40. An iron sword you bought for 10 ducats was sold for 90. A box of paper bought in Tunis for 30 ducats is sold for 250 and a jar of cheap Venetian perfume bought for 100 ducats is sold for 1,000. You tell your customers you're the cheapest and fairest merchant in the area, even paying children around the city to spread word of how good your prices are. Though little do they know, you're overcharging them for products at a rate of 100 to 400 percent more than valued. People pay with what they have. This can be in goods such as grain, cattle, textiles, but many other pay in gold dust, copper, iron, and other precious metals. After selling all of your wares for the day, you'll pack up the rest and begin heading back to your inn to write in length how much you've sold. You're not done trading yet though. You'll be in the city for the next nine months selling what you have in your caravan, but hopefully following this venture, you'll have enough to retire and repay your debts back in full. Following your accounting, as the sun begins to set over the golden dunes around the city, with the glistening sun, the sky explodes in blue, purple, orange, and red as shadows dance across the city. Griots, or local storytellers, entertain the people and recount stories of the great king Mansa Musa and his pilgrimage to Mecca. Others tell stories of the great kings slaying the demon fish who terrorized the locals. Other griots tell of the previous king before Mansa Musa, who decided to explore the world and sail west into their horizon, only to be never seen again. Passing by the stalls and vendors of the street, food such as skewered rats, soya, cooked yams, and pepper soup waits for customers. Women shout out to passerbyers about finely woven blankets for sale. And walking through the city, you'll be greeted by locals, merchants, travelers, 
those headed for pilgrimage, and the empire's thousands of different cultures. Watching the mud brick walls turn black as the sun begins to fade, you will soon retire for the day and write a letter to your wife and daughters. And when it's ready, you'll give it to the next merchant traveling north back to Algiers. This is just one day in the life, and I couldn't include everything and certainly missed on a lot. But thank you for watching. I do hope this gives you a somewhat accurate account of what life was like for a medieval merchant in the Mali Empire. Thank you for watching.